think that a lot of people have that desire to have some level of calmness and um, more stillness in their lives, and they, they, they can see that sitting can bring that. So the tradition is 2,600 years old. Even though it's 2,600 years old, and we are now in you know, 2011, that unfortunately the problem of human suffering has not disappeared. These questions are questions which are still contemporary today. Is, is, is that where is their lasting happiness? And so even though the contemporary value system is about acquisition of power and wealth and certain kinds of status, experiences, ultimately what we can see is, is that as, as satisfying as these can be in the short term, none of them are guaranteed. All of them change. And none of them, by their inherent nature of change, can be ultimately satisfying. So in order for people to come into a, a place of more peace and themselves, their basis has to be resting in something that is more reliable than the momentary pleasures that come from having what you want and getting rid of what you don't want. The tradition itself offers a way to reflect, a way to look, to see uh, what the cause of that suffering may be, to see whether it's possible that it will end, and also offers a path. So the idea that there is a teaching that one can simply roll out of bed and roll into New York Insight and receive this teaching, I think is a very exciting thing. Uh, the thought that perhaps, not so much that we have answers, but that we have um, ways of reflecting that might be of help in the search for happiness, in the search for the end of suffering. To be able to separate out uh, ordeals and terrible things that may happen in life, which I have no control over, but that I do have a say in how I'm going to respond to it. And how I respond to it is where am I going to be suffering or not suffering. As a New Yorker who is walking down the street and being completely bombarded by every possible thing that you can imagine, uh, people asking for money, people who are so attractive that one turns their head to look at them, think people who are so ugly that one turns away uh, from them, uh, we have now the capacity to, uh, to see it for what it is, to see our reactivity, and then to, ah, reacting. And in that awareness of what we are doing internally and externally, we're now becoming more free from our conditioning. So we're waiting for a train and may have an appointment to, uh, to make and the train is late. So stress starts to build. If we're a practitioner, we see the stress building and start to just in that moment practice our breath concentration, practice a standing meditation on the station, imperceptible to anyone else, and doing that in a way that allows us to be present and not, again, reactive.